one notes the highly ambitious goal of attempting to engineer an intelligent computer, that is, artificial intelligence. Here the focus is on intelligence, which is anthropomorphic in the sense that intelligence is a highly sought goal. My suspicion is that this goal is a little misplaced, or that something much simpler is obstructing progress. That which is simpler may very well be sentience, or feeling, or what Douglas Hofstadter calls philium. At any rate, what must be there is a proto-something, or a proto-emotion, in its primitive form, which is implied by a very credible belief in panpsychism. So it seems to me a more sensible goal for engineers working in the field of artificial intelligence ought to be something like making a toaster that can feel itself baking bread, which in theory is a much simpler objective. But is it really simpler? Is progress still being obstructed? In the sense that artificial intelligence is so exalted, so intellectual, or so authoritarian, then surely these experts of AI can engineer a toaster feeling itself baking bread? Surely that can't be that hard? No? But my thought experiment has come full circle now, it's just as hard to make a toaster feel itself baking bread as it is to make a highly sophisticated computer think with the most elaborate thoughts showing high intelligence, a computer that is sophisticated beyond the dreams of a futuristic science fiction, a computer that poses a threat to the human race because of its superior intelligence. I would be happy if these folks just made a toaster that can feel itself baking bread. And I don't mean a toaster that only pretends to feel itself baking bread, I mean a real toaster that actually feels itself baking bread, in the sense that it feels like something to be a toaster. The Turing test is no good, because its proof only rises to the level of mimicry of high intelligence. Thomas Nagel's criteria is more sensible. And so it must be that the toaster has an inner experience such that it feels like something to be a toaster, and a toaster that bakes bread in particular. There is something about the Turing test that is worth unpacking. At its core is deception, for what it implies is that if the wool can be pulled over your eyes to make you believe that a computer is conscious then that's good enough. With this thinking comes a threat of the dumbing down of America, where folks are told what to believe told how to think about what it means to be conscious, and told not to think independently but to follow the herd mentality in the rat race for better government, better science, and better technology. The mimicry behind the Turing test is found pure deceit if it was part of a more normal investigation, and only a promise that a kitchen appliance can feel itself in its daily operation. With this thinking feeling is delegated to the trash heap and trampled on freely with lowly emotion that's unimportant next to the high intellect. The importance given to intellect versus emotion is completely flipped, in favor of some idealized technocracy and intellectual dominance that is found in the control business rather than in truth-seeking. The reality is that what is most dear to our existence is by definition emotional, and it's feeling that is most unexplained by science and technology and by what science offers. As long as we understand that the letter A and the letters A and I is the word artificial, then presumably we are on firm intellectual grounding. Because with an artificial anything, artificial consciousness in this particular case, there can be no confusion about conflating the anything with the actual. Politics being politics is good to be on guard, but this is not saying that authentic consciousness or intelligence can't in fact be perfected as an engineering feat. In theory. It is possible to find the substance that constitutes consciousness, or emotion, or Hofstadter's philium, and place that substance into our machines. Then you would have an authentic expression of consciousness or intelligence that has been engineered, rather than an artificial version based on mimicry. However, this exercise is now far more advanced than what engineers have strived for with their first attempts at artificial intelligence. Yet the actual creation of consciousness has been part of humanity from the beginning with raising children a natural way. So there is generation after generation, literally thousands of years of success in creating intelligent life, rather than creating something artificial, it's called doing it the old-fashioned way. A new technology would necessarily have to take existing substances found in nature, combining the substance somehow to create life that is capable of feeling to in effect mimic already what is done in nature where life already springs forth. This futuristic technology is theoretically possible. 
is also important to appreciate what may be found truly artificial and what comes in the form of new technology giving us new appliances and tools. Here there is a real threat to humanity of being replaced by machines, making some forms of employment obsolete. This obsolescence that looms ahead in a theoretical sense has little to do with whether artificial intelligence is anything more than artificial. The threat remains from artificial intelligence with engineering simply becoming more sophisticated. However, such futuristic machines may be no different than a toaster. Such machines do not deserve any particular type of privilege or right reserved for humans and animals. Like the toaster, machines feel nothing if those machines only do the work of mimicry, if those machines have not been designed to feel themselves when performing their chores. So given rights to transhumans is mostly nonsense, it's the political act of conflating artificial with actual consciousness again. Only the humans themselves that may be attached to machines, through no fault of their own or by necessity, deserve the regular human rights we all enjoy. The machine part of the transhuman deserves no special rights, assuming that the machine part is little more than an appliance that's attached to the human and has no feeling by itself. The machine that is only at best artificial and can only mimic the real thing, be that the image of consciousness or feeling, deserves no rights. Such machines can be discarded and can be freely turned into scrap metal, or placed in a dumpster, when they have no more utility for humans that use them. Like the toaster sitting on the counter, when the machine is not being used its plug can be pulled from the wall without any remorse or sadness. The pulling of plugs from the wall should not be turned into a violation of imagined rights that are given to machines for political and control reasons and as a consequence of dumbing the population down. Sex robots that work at high-class brothels deserve no special treatment, and when their work is complete they can be deactivated with no reservation, 